What's going on guys? This is Mark Kaiser with The Mobile Home Dealer. We're on the road today in sunny Sebring, Florida. As you can see, it's sunny. That's, uh, that's for darn sure. My, uh, my German skin definitely shows how sunny it is. Uh, today we're going to not really talk about an educational video as we are going to talk about just a basic uh, informational video. Um, a lot of times people on the channel that they see the homes that we have for sale, we talk about lot rent. Uh, we talk about um, you know, what's that included, what does it cost. Um, you know, how the whole lot rent thing works. Uh, but then we also have people asking us all the time and calling into our office about co-ops and uh, land-owned mobile home parks. And that's not, nece not necessarily something that we deal with on a regular basis. Um, but we've had a lot of people asking us about it and asking us about, um, you know, does the mobile home dealer deal with it or, or what are some things that, um, that they should look for if they're looking at um, buying a mobile home and buying a mobile home with land. Uh, so today we just want to kind of go over the top three things that uh, you should all know uh, when buying a mobile home on leased land. But y'all know the drill, guys. You know the deal. If, before we get started with that, we need you all to do us a huge favor and smash that like button and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel below so that you're up to speed with everything that we here at the mobile home dealer are doing, both in our educational videos, kind of an informative quick video like we're doing here today, as well as all the properties that we have coming up as we got, uh, we got some real winners coming up here, guys. We want to make sure that you're up to speed on. So, okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the topic of um, mobile home on, if you're buying a mobile home uh, on a co-op or in a co-op and you're owning your own land, uh, there's really three main things that we got to make sure that you're well aware of uh, on that. Um, so you can make a good informed decision. Now, quick review, uh, predominantly what you'll see a lot of times in, in, in uh, mobile home parks are where you buy the house and you lease the land uh, through a payment, okay? That payment is called a lot rent, okay? And that can vary depending on what part of the country you're in, be a few hundred dollars to you know almost a few thousand dollars uh, depending on where you're at, okay? Now, there's gonna be a lot of things that are included in lot rent as we've discussed in other videos. Um, you know, your water bill, your sewer bill, um, your trash bill, a lot of times they'll cut your grass for you. Um, and it'll also cover the amenities like the pool, the fitness center, all that type of stuff. Um, in our firm, we don't really talk about lot rent. We talk about kind of a condo association do because if you've ever lived in a condo or a townhome, it's kind of the same thing. Um, you're, you're basically responsible for the house, but the outside stuff like the lawn and the water, um, you know, the, the palm tree cutting or, you know, the rocks for all you folks down there in Arizona, uh, that's usually taken care of by the park. Um, but when you're talking about buying in a co-op or a land-owned park, uh, we get a lot of questions on that. And there's really the three main things that we have to go over today. Uh, so the first is going to be um, a lot of times people go into land-owned mobile home parks because they want a lower lot rent, okay? Um, and that's true, okay? Uh, you'll probably more than likely get a lower fee uh, per month if you own the land or if you own a share. But that's really where the investigation on your part has to begin, okay? Because a lot of times the uh, shares um, or the, um, the land, depending on what setup you have, um, they don't really include much. They might have a lower lot rent or a lower, a lower HOA fee, uh, but they won't include the water bill. They won't include your sewer bill. You'll be responsible for cutting your own grass. Uh, you'll be subjected to quarterly or annually um, uh, reports from the HOA about other fees that are assessed, such as, um, let's say the pool needs to be resurfaced or they're going to put some really nice trees and shrubs at the front of the neighborhood. Um, those aren't going to plant themselves, okay, and they're not going to magically pay for themselves. Um, so those fees will then be passed on to the homeowners. Uh, if you've ever owned a single family home uh, before, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, you know, you might have a pool in that single family home community or, or some, you know, a, a play area for the kids or something. Um, you know, those, those things, they wear out, you know, they got to get uh, updated, they got to get resurfaced, they got to get cleaned, all that type of stuff. So those fees a lot of times will be passed on uh, to those homeowners in addition to the HOA payment. So the first thing you really want to understand when you're, when you're looking at your budget and, um, and you're trying to bring down your, your, your monthly bill, a lot of people will immediately say, oh, I'll just go and get a land-owned mobile home uh, because my bill's lower. I, I get what you're saying, but the, the, you're not really looking at it for dollars for dollars, guys, because most of the time, lot rent parks uh, will include a ton more stuff in the lot rent. I, I don't know if I walked into a cobweb or what, I'm sorry. Um, the lot of things, the lot rent will include a bunch of different things that the HOA payments uh, won't. Okay, so you just got to get your facts straight. You got to get all your dollars on your paper. Um, you know, if you're doing a pen and pencil, doing a calculator, however you're doing it, 
Um, you just got to understand exactly what that HOA payment is, exactly what it includes, and what it doesn't, and what you're going to be responsible for. So, first thing you got to make sure you do, get all your dollars straight. Okay. The second thing you've got to make sure you do is you have to make sure, as I look at my cheat sheet, um, what is the uh, what is the share price? Like, how much does it cost for you to buy into the park? Um, yeah, that varies. Okay, I'll give you a couple of numbers. If you want to live in a, uh, a mobile home park uh, in Central Florida, um, then your share price averages about sixty-three thousand dollars. Now, that sixty-three grand does not include the sale price of the house. Okay, so you got the house price and you got your share price. Okay, so um, you know sometimes um, they folks who sell those properties uh, and God bless them, everybody's trying to do the best thing they can they'll kind of say, oh, the house price is, you know, pick a number, 30 grand, 40 grand, 10 grand. And everybody says, oh, that's so great. Well, they don't tell you that, oh yeah, there's also the share price of 60, 70, 100, dollars on top of that. Okay. So you really got to get, it's kind of the same thing as, as point number one. Point number two, you got to really know how much does the share price cost? And then how much does the house cost? Then you put both those numbers together and that's really what you're buying. When you buy the mobile home on leased land, you have one price, and that is the price of the house because, again, you're leasing the land, so you're not buying it. It's kind of like a car lease. Now, I understand. I understand. I'm from the Midwest, too. A lot of Midwesterners in this channel, and we a lot of times Midwest folks want to own everything. You know, we don't want to rent it. We don't want to lease it. I get it. I get it. But you have to look at it for a dollar standpoint, guys. And that's really the point of this whole video. Um, I'm not pro or con co-ops. Uh, us and the firm are not pro or con uh, land-owned parks. What we're really a pro of is education and uh, just making sure that you understand what you're really buying. Okay, so make sure you understand how much is the house and how much is the share price. Number three, a lot of times um, people say, oh, I want to own the land. That's why I want to buy the house. I, look, I get it. I understand it. Okay, going back to my Midwest roots, I get it. Um, but do you really own it? I don't know. You're going to have to ask the park. Because a lot of times the parks will say land-owned or co-opt. And really what that means when you peel back the, the, the page and, you know, kind of peel back the layer of the onion, if you will, what that really means is that you get a share uh, of the park, okay, a share of ownership. kind of looks like a stock certificate, um, if that's still a thing. Um and that's really what it is. It's a piece of paper, okay? So if you want to go and put a barn out there, you want to put a shed, uh, you want to put uh, a gate for your dog to run around in, you want to plant, um, you know, an extravagant uh, garden or flowers or something, you're going to have to fly that up the flagpole with the HOA. Chances are they're not going to allow you to do that. They might, but chances are they probably won't, especially if you're going to put a, uh, what they call a foreign structure on the property, okay? It's so like a shed or, or, or something like that, okay? Um, so do you really own the property? So what you have to figure out too. So as a quick recap, when you're looking at buying a mobile home and a mobile home park where you own the own the land, own the land, make sure that you understand exactly what is the HOA payment, what does that HOA payment include, what does it not include, and what are you as the owner of the property going to be responsible for, okay? Can't stress that enough. Once you have all those numbers down, put them on your piece of paper, put them on your uh, your budget, and then start comparing what your real monthly fee is, okay? Number two, make sure you understand what the price of the uh, share is. Is it 20 grand? Is it 100 grand? Is it 200 grand? How much is it, okay? How much is that? And then keep in mind, guys, that share price does not include the house. So it's gonna be the share price plus the house, okay? So put both those together. Now you got your, your out the door price. And number three, do you own the property? Or do you just get a piece of paper that says that you're a member of the community? If you own the property, great. You own the property. It's your, you know, it's your property. If you don't, then immediately don't just assume that you can go and put out your shed, put out your fence for your doggy, you know, all that kind of stuff. Don't just assume that, guys, because your HOA is more than likely going to have to approve that. So just because you're buying in a land-owned community, don't just think that all of a sudden, oh, I'm going to do whatever I want on my property like I did with my single-family house. Because chances are that's not the case. So guys, I really hope that helps uh, uh, answer some questions that we've had from viewers in the channel. Thank you so much for being a part of the community. And that question came in from one of our viewers. Uh, so I really appreciate everybody being interactive here. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us let us know here on the channel, uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys like land owned? Do you guys like uh, lot rent? What do you guys like? What are the pros and what are the cons? And uh, another thing that would help us out quite a bit, 
uh, is let us know where you guys are from. Um, you know, do you see a lot of co-ops, a lot of land-owned uh, parks where you're at, or do you see more uh, lot rent? You know, because down here in Florida, uh, we see a lot of both. So it kind of is a 50-50 split, so to speak. So again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day, folks. I know you got a lot of things going on to learn about the uh, three most important things that you need to know and be educated on before you entertain the idea of buying a mobile home in a land-owned park. This is Mark Kaiser with The Mobile Home Dealer. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all on the next one.